Client needs are rapidly evolving. Technology is enabling transformation of the marketplace and new and existing competitors are innovating their business models in response. Within five to ten years, consumers, businesses and institutions will have the ability to send and receive payments instantly, domestically and across borders, with full transparency into costs, FX rates and fees. Well, Bank of New York Mellon Treasury Services is responding rapidly to these challenges and I'm delighted to say that CEO Paul Camp joins us now to explain how a very good day to you, Paul. Wonderful to be here. Okay, now you have been to Cybos before as a leader in different parts of the industry. So what do you think is different about this year's event and what's particularly exciting you for what's left of 2019? 2019 and 2020 for Bank of New York Mellon is all about sustainable growth. It's enabling our clients to be successful and we're doing that across both existing technologies and new technologies. And very, very importantly, we're engaged with them, not about technology for technology's sake, but about the benefit and how can we drive results for them with their clients, with their suppliers, with their counterparties, using our payment, our collection, our liquidity, our trade services to drive their success. And we're doing it in a very sustainable fashion. What I mean by that is investing in infrastructure while we're investing in differentiated products, all with the client at the center of what we're doing. Here we are, 2019 Cybos. Who's generating the buzz on the conference floor amongst you and your clients? No, it's all about the clients. So, uh, and this is really, really important to me. The buzz should be the clients creating the buzz because they're evolving their business models and we're supporting them in the background. So what we do is to make the client successful. Their buzz is fantastic. And their buzz changes region by region, segment by segment. What's happening in the Nordics is different than what's happening in, in Asia. And Asia is not one region. What's happening in China is different than what's happening in Singapore. So the buzz to me, it's a very local, regional buzz, also a global buzz. But that buzz is all about the clients. And if Bank of New York Mellon can make our clients successful, that's what we're here for. Right, it's going to be even more buzzy in 2020. Definitely loud, that buzz. You got it. You got <laughs> it. But it's different everywhere. And yeah. this is the thing that to me really stands out. You can learn from discussions with clients from different places around the world. Regions, markets, countries, segments are evolving differently. And there's a lot to be learned. What do you think you've learned this year? What I've learned is, you know, yet again to listen to the clients. So we, we are working within the industry to drive the industry forward. And as you started, it is all about the evolution to real time everything over time. Different markets get there differently. Different clients get there through different paths. Uh, and what we're doing is we're supporting them through the existing channels because not everyone is going to change at once while we invest in driving the future with them. Mm. And what do you see as the top three or indeed four examples of what BMY Mellon is doing to actually lead that digital transformation both for itself and of course for those clients? Sure, it's, it's around different, it's around real-time payments both in the United States and globally. So allowing our clients to move money instantaneously through existing channels but also through APIs, that's critical. On the trade services, uh, a piece of the business very specifically. We've made an announcement around uh, 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 specifically supporting large financial institution clients where they are, they are outsourcing their business and we're insourcing it. And around liquidity, uh, which is critical in a payment landscape because where there's liquidity, there needs, uh, where there are payments, there needs to be ample liquidity to move funds and where there's receipt, there, there's the receipt of liquidity. It's transparency and visibility into that liquidity and allowing our clients the ability to manage their liquidity flows and to forecast those flows effectively. You've talked about being a steady hand whilst readily investing in new technologies. Are clients bringing challenges to you that can be solved through these digital improvements? Entirely, but you have to do it in a safe environment. And that's, that is what we love to talk about. And when we, we, we engage with clients, they engage with us because they trust us, because of our safety, our soundness, our year-over-year -year investment in infrastructure, which is critical. And on top of that, we layer all of the, the, the differentiation, which allows them to transition from where they are today to right, an evolutionary path, which over time won't seem like evolution. It will seem like a radical change. Mm. But we're living through it now, and it, it feels evolutionary. It's much faster than that. Uh, and through that path, we need to be their partner with what we do today, 
with selectively where they're moving and then with allowing them to successfully transition to the future. Mm. And it presents other challenges within the organization itself because we've got digitization, new products and services, and of course, a focus on data. So how do all of these forces impact on the skill sets that you're looking for in, in your people because they've got to respond to this to deliver on your values. I love that question. So people are critical to us. We talk a lot about technology, but people, whether it's the client or our teams, are absolutely critical. We are investing in our people and, our, and the skills uh, of, of our teams need to evolve and are evolving through this, dot, through this, this period. And that will, will vary. Technology is now central Mm. to how we work as an organization. So whether it's a product team, a service team, a sales team, a technology team, operations, within Bank of New York Mellon, we're all co-located. So there's co-development uh, with, you know, very, with, with agile, uh, ag a a I, I don't even want to call it agile technology because it's, it's sort of agility yeah. of delivery mm. uh, throughout, right, throughout the organization mm. uh, to deliver solutions to clients. And seamlessness. Absolutely, but also in terms of recruiting and retaining talent, yes. right, which is critical. And, and for us, very important is, is the very clear view that talent is everywhere, so diversity and inclusion is critical. Mm. Um, we are an employer of choice for diverse talent. That's critical to our success. Uh, so bringing in the right talent globally, uh, engaging that talent, making sure we're an inclusive environment, and ensuring that clients are a part of, uh, of, of that environment as well is absolutely critical. Mm. Also making best use of the technology already available to us, some of which is already there, uh, including real-time payment solutions, there's Venmo checks that can be deposited with a photo from a smartphone. Uh, what else does RTP going to bring us? RTP is on an evolutionary journey as different markets are on an evolutionary journey. RTP itself stands for real-time payments and it goes to where we think the industry is going, which is very, very client-driven. Clients will come to expect instantaneous movement of money. They'll come to expect this 24 by seven. They'll come to expect this globally. They'll come to expect full transparency into when clients are, when payments are initiated, when they're received, if there's FX embedded, what's the rate, if there are fees embedded, we're not there yet. We will get there, I firmly believe, over a two, three, four, five, ten year period. So when we talk about RTP, it's within this context of where things are going, mm. within the context of what clients will come to expect as foundational. And each of the markets, whether it's the US with RTP, whether it's around the world with different markets are getting there at different paths. My firm belief is that these will be connected together over time to provide that journey. But in addition to all of our investment in this level of, of, of evolution of the existing platforms, we're also looking at different things and making different bets so that we're sure we get there to deliver with our clients, whether it's through existing that evolve or new that are coming. And in terms of looking at different things, I know that BNY Mellon is also involved in utility settlement coin. What's the difference between that and Bitcoin? Okay, there is quite a significant difference. So utility settlement coin, which is also called Finality, uh, is a company that we have invested in, as have many of our uh, global peers. Mm. Right, so they're backed by some of the most respected uh, and largest financial institutions in the world. Uh, what what Finality, also known as Utility Settlement Coin, is focused on is the digitization and the tokenization of commercial bank money mm. uh, in partnership with central banks. So it would be US dollars, uh, Euro, pound sterling, Canadian dollars, uh, Japanese yen, working with uh, central banks in each of those uh, uh, countries and with leading commercial banks to digitize the currencies in a very sound, very safe, very effective and very efficient way. Uh, and it's really, really exciting. So it leverages some of the technology mm. that uh, supports digital currencies today and cryptocurrencies today, but it's very much focused on fiat currencies, yes. commercial bank money, and in collaboration with regulators and with commercial banks. Okay. Many of the most interesting things happening at the moment among payments seem to be involved in the consumer space. Uh, Bank of New York Mellon doesn't have a retail banking presence or a credit card platform. Uh, but how are you involved in where the industry is going to find those solutions? Yes, so innovation is happening everywhere. You're absolutely right that innovation at the consumer level is extremely interesting. So we're absolutely staying on top of that, but a big, big piece of our client base 
are financial institutions, asset managers, insurance companies, and large cap corporate clients that deal directly with consumers. Mm -hmm. And so while we don't deal directly with consumers, our clients do. So that innovation and driving that innovation is absolutely embedded in our thinking. It's embedded in our client dialogues. And our goal is to be the, the power behind. If we can make our clients successful, whether their counterparties and clients are other institutions or consumers, that's our goal. In terms of the future, what are the challenges that you feel the banking sector generally faces in creating that future? There's so much happening, the relationship with FinTech, where it's going, all these developments happening behind the scenes. If I gave you a crystal ball and told you to stare in and read back the rooms, what am I going to see? What are you going to tell me? <laughs> Financial institutions have woken up to the fact that we need to be ensuring that we're delivering value to clients. That's the most important thing and that we are driving innovation throughout the industry. We're driving value throughout the industry. And the, the evolution of, of fintech companies has been a really, really solid wake up call in my view mm. to financial services providers. And I feel very strongly that the winners, when we look forward, are the banks and financial technology companies that embed that thinking around sustainable growth, right? So doing, driving innovation, driving change with clients in a safe, effective, controlled environment, it goes a bit to where I had talked about finality and utility settlement coin, mm -hmm. which combines you know, the very forward-looking view with the safety and soundness of doing this in conjunction and in partnership with regulators. I really believe that's the path forward. We very much look forward to driving that, to being front of foot, doing it with clients, doing this with regulators, and, and driving innovation, value creation for our clients in a safe, sound, effective environment. Well, I think we look forward to where this innovation is driven when we catch up with you in 12 months' time at Cybos 2020. <laughs> but for now, uh, Bank of New York Mellon Treasury Services CEO, Paul Camp, thank you very much for joining us thank on Cybos TV. A sincere pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Fantastic. Fantastic.